Hey everyone, James back here. Welcome back for some showdown sessions. Today we'll be heading into the UU tier, underused tier. I have not played uh, much of underused. I played OU a lot. I really don't play that much with the other formats. But I might as well just experiment it with you guys on Pokemon Showdown since this is Pokemon Showdown Sessions. The only format we will not be doing will be VGC because there's a separate series for that. Plus, I don't like playing VGC on Showdown, so yep, you guys showed your support in the last video, so I want to keep doing these more often, and today's team we'll be using is a interesting team. I, this was like one of the few UU teams I actually did have. I think I built this like three months ago when I was playing the format, but we have a Focus Sash, Sticky Web, Galvantula, pretty standard. Life Orb, Kyurem, which is actually pretty nice in this format. I think it's underrated. We got Leftover Sub Hoopa, which is actually pretty cool because it's very strong. Uh, Leftover Stealth Rock, Toxic, and Polyon. Not Ice Beam, it's usually Ice Beam over Toxic. However, I wanted to deal with uh, other threats, such as my Lodic, for instance. My Lodic can give this team a huge problem. Uh, I got my Mega Aerodactyl with Hone's Claws and Roost, with, so I don't miss a Stone Edge, so hopefully that I don't miss a Stone Edge, but yeah, Hone's Claw is to boost that accuracy, which is really nice on Mega Aerodactyl. Mega Aerodactyl isn't actually as frail as people think it is, and we got our Choice Banded Arcanine as my last set, so we're going to find some battles. Uh, we'll probably do probably four to six, depending on how short. I think we did like four battles. No, it'll probably be three to four. It depends on how long. Especially since I play OU, but UU, I'm pretty sure it's more of a stall tier because there are a lot of bulky Pokemon in UU, such as Suicune, Milotic, Rotom Heat is also part of it. There's Empoleon. As we're gonna find our first battle, and this is an interesting team. Uh, Ampharos. Toxic Crow, Charizard. I forgot regular Charizard was put into UU, so that's an interesting thing to note. Uh, Shaman, Chandelure, and Blastoise. So, no, no hazards on his team. It looks like he only has a Rapid Spinner. None of these Pokemon get hazards, unless Toxic Crow gets Toxic Spikes or something like that. But I don't think it does. He might lead off Blastoise. I think my best lead is Galvantula either way because it hits the it hits the Charizard. It can set up Sticky Web. We want to leave Blastoise, that's fine. Or maybe a better play is just to leave Kieran, because Kieran can destroy his entire team. Actually, which Mega is he? Is he Mega Ampharos or Mega Blastoise? Because they're both uh in this tier, I believe. Yeah, Mega Ampharos is in this tier, definitely. Mega Blastoise is in this tier. So I would assume regular Blastoise then, because Mega Ampharos is, would probably be more common. As, I don't know, maybe Arcanine. Yeah, I'm going to try Arcanine. As he leaves Charizard, which is actually fine. Because now I can launch a Wild Charge and possibly knock him out. I don't care if he switches out. As he has Ancient Power, which is interesting. The Wild Charge is able to knock out his Charizard. Uh, we do take a lot of damage, but that is fine because... Game Rare Charizard is nice for... Um, Actually, it wasn't even that big of a deal. But he sends out Blastoise. I'm going to go for the Wild Charge. This is his Mega. As we miss the KO, he does go for Aqua Tech. What kind of team is this? I don't know, but I can go into my Galvantula. Click Thunder. Yeah, he has no switch into Thunder. And if I get rid of his Rapid Spinner, I can just set up my Sticky Webs, no problem. If he Scarf Chandelure, I'll be able to outspeed him with my Kyurem. So that's fine. He is going to send out Chandelure. We're going to find out if he's Scarf right now. I'm going to set up my Sticky Web. He's not even Scarf. What kind of team is this? He might be uh, Calm Mind Leftovers. I'm going to hit him with a Thunder. Just do as much damage as I can. Get the Para, which is nice, as he goes for Nightshade. That's not a common move on Chandelure. I know that, at least. I think I could go... Hmm. I could go into Aerodactyl. Yeah, I'm going to go into Aerodactyl. That pair up allows me to possibly set up with uh, Hone's Claw and win the game. Because I can definitely knock out Toxicroak. 
And I could possibly knock out Ampharos after two Hones Claws boost. So, we'll see. I don't think he has really anything to hit me other than Nightshade. Uh, unless he has, like, Hidden Power Ice, I don't think that will be a 2-8 knockout. But we'll see. Maybe he's Scar Shaman. I can see him being Scar Shaman. As he is going to send out Ampharos, which is fine. Because... All I need is to damage Ampharos. Actually, Kyurem just wins the game. So... I'm going to go for as much damage as possible. Stone Edge. Yeah, I would have been able to knock him out with uh, 2. Uh, Thunderbolt actually knocks me out. I'm surprised. Is that Expert Belt or Choice Specs? But I'm pretty free to send out Hoopa here and just click... Psy Shock, I think. Yeah, I can, I can freely click Psy Shock. Or Shatter Ball. Uh, they do the same amount of shame in either way, so I guess it really doesn't matter. So... He could send out... So... He might send out Toxic Croak next. And if he sends out Toxic Croak, I'm just gonna sub because... Toxic Croak does carry Sucker Punch. Unless Toxic Croak is faster than me. 295... No, 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 I forgot. Sticky Web is up. So I'm gonna sucker substitute right here to avoid any potential Sucker Punches. If he wants to bulk up, that's fine. He actually has Bullet Punch. And that won't be able to break my sub, so that is nice. As I'm able to get a free Psy Shock and I'm going to knock this thing out. I don't know why he has Bullet Punch. I mean, it, I guess it does make sense. As we are able to knock him out, but... Yeah, I don't think... I'm not sure how high I am on this tier. I might not have played UU in a long time. Since the server reset. As I'm going to go for a Shadow Ball onto the Shaman. It should be a 2-hit knockout. It was nothing to laugh at as Shadow Ball. Uh, doesn't get to hit knockout, but it is able to get the special defense drop, which I believe puts him in that range. Uh, he's not leftovers. I'm going to Shadow Ball as we do knock him out. And Chandelure is going to come out. We do know he's not Scarf, so once he hits the Sticky Web, basically I'll be able to outspeed him, click Shadow Ball, and win the game. So we're going to find another battle as uh, there was a challenge for me. As he does go into Chandelure. And he was paralyzed. I forgot he was paralyzed too. As I'm just going to click Shadow Ball and win the game. So yeah. That should be it. As I'm going to look for another battle. As we find Team Fossils with a Grovile. <laughs> oh man. This should be fun. Uh, Kiram does really well against his team. Our power hits uh, Aurora's for 4 times effective. Ice Beam hits uh, the... Tyrantrum, uh, Grovile, Earth Power hits Bastiodon, Earth Power hits Heliolisk, Ice Beam hits. I can literally win with Curum if I get my Sticky Web up, and I don't really care if he has rocks. Yeah, I really don't care if he sets up rocks. I'm gonna go uh, my Galvantula and click Sticky Web because Sticky, he has no way to get rid of my Hazard, so I'm gonna go for Sticky Web because I can avoid a possible Dragon Dance setup or a Choice Scarf user. As he does go for Volt Switch, he's 348, uh, we're 346, so I, obviously we don't know if he's Scarf. Uh, here, I'm just going to fire off a of Thunder, do as much damage as possible. Is that Assault Vest? No, that's not even Assault Vest, that's just bulky, wow. That took that so well, looks like especially defensive. As here, he did get Toxic off, but that's not really a big deal. I'm going to go to Empoleon, actually. I'm going to see if I can get my rocks up right away. As he goes for Heavy Slam, which is fine. As that does basically nothing. As now, I think I'm going to get my rocks up. I don't care if he gets his rocks up. Because if I have my hazards, my hazards are much more valuable in this game. Specifically because he has a... Aurorus. Which can now freely switch out. And... I think Stealth Fox will guarantee me any KO with Kyurem, uh, just to guarantee the KO, and it would break starting on Bastardon as Heliolisk is going to come out, probably Dry Skin, uh, predicting the Water type move, but nope, as I'm not going to give it to him. And here, I'm thinking of sacking my Galvantula. I really don't need Galvantula at all in this game. It only needed to get up has Hazards, which is why I'm going to sack it off to the Thunderbolt. As it's going to go down. As now I can set up my Kyurem and click any move I want really. I'm going to go for the Earth Power. Knock out his uh, Heliolisk. He has no switches to Kyurem because 
I either hit him with an Earth Power or an Ice Beam and knock him out. As he's going to go Bastardon, which is not a switch in because Earth Power, obviously. It is able to knock him out thanks to my Life Orb, which is nice. And the Sticky Web is really going to help Stealth Rocks break any potential Focus Sash. As he's going to go Go Goat, and I don't think these things are Assault Fest. I'm going to click Ice Beam. As we are actually not able to knock him out, but we do get the Freeze as he falls out. As he goes for Bulk Up. Wow, especially Defensive Go Goat, I think. Yeah, that actually makes sense. I'm going to go for the Ice Beam again as it is able to knock out his Go-Go. And now, basically, I'm pretty sure nothing survives. Yeah, I don't think anything survives. As Rova is going to come out. It's not going to ask me my Kieran Fix his Sticky Web. I'm going to go for the Ice Beam as he goes for Quick Attack. Normal Gem? Normal Gem Grovile. Uh, okay. As Aurorus is going to come out and... I think I'm going to click Roost, actually. Roost does actually make sense. Yeah, I'm going to click Roost and see what he wants to go for. As he goes for Calm Mind, actually. So, that is annoying, but I do have my Arcanine. And I think I'm actually going to switch Arcanine. He has no switches to Close Combat, either. So, I can fire off Close Combats. And he's going to set up another Calm Mind. However, Arcanine just clicks, clicks Close Combat and wins the game now. So, yeah. Interesting teams we've been facing so far. I'm hoping we face some better ones because I'm pretty sure UU is a bit more competitive than this. But then again, this is probably a low ladder. Uh, just going to click Close Combat. I outspeed a Scarf because of that sticky web. So yeah, either way, I have this game locked up. It's impossible for me to lose because uh, yeah, I can just click Close Combat. As Heliolisk, unless he's Scarf. But even if we Scarf, Kieran White can take any Electric-type attack. As we are able to get a close combat, knock him out. And we are going to go 2-0 right now. As we're going to find another game. As I definitely think there are better players in UU. And even though I haven't played this tier much, uh, this is actually probably one of my least played tiers. Uh, Uber is being my first uh, tier that I really don't play. A second would probably be UU. As here we got an interesting team of Crocodile, Crobat, Azelf, Darmanitan, Needle King, Needle Queen, not Needle King, uh, Ga and Gastrodon. So he has so many potential uh, hazards on his team. Needle Queen can be a hazard user. Azelf can have Stealth Rocks, and Crocodile can have Stealth Rocks. Uh, I would probably assume the Azelf would have Stealth Rocks because it's quite a common set. He could also be like um, uh, Scarf Crocodile, or he could be the bulky variant and Needle Queen, probably the Life Orb variant to be honest. The Mana 10 is an annoying issue for this team. I have to get my rocks up as soon as possible. I feel like I could actually win with Aerodactyl if I am able to weaken his Needle Queen and his Gastrodon. Yeah, I can definitely win with that. So, I think leading off Kyurem is actually pretty safe. It beats. Needle Queen or uh, Crocodile, but he actually goes uh, Darmanitan, which is the one monster I do not have a switch into. So, I think we can li live one Flare Blitz. I kind of want to click Earth Power. Yeah, because I really don't want to switch right away because I don't want Aerodactyl taking too much damage because Aerodactyl is my win condition. And I really don't need Kyurem as much. I mean, Kyurem is nice for... But we are actually able to outspeed the Darmanitan, that's not Choice Scarf, and... Oh, oh, we might have won the Speed Tie. Okay, that makes sense, we might have won the Speed Tie. As Azelf is going to come out. Now, I actually do like Kyurem. But Azelf shouldn't have a move that can knock me out unless it's like a normal gem explosion. I think like going for Ice Beam is fine. As he goes for Light Screen, which is interesting, uh, is he set up? Does he have anything to set up? I don't think he has anything that can set up. Unless it's Gastrodon, which is like a stall mod. Oh, I would not want to face that. Well, I have Toxic on Empoleon, so I would win that. I'm going to launch a Draco Meteor. As he goes for a knockoff, which is smart, and I'm going to fire off a Draco Meteor. And it's actually able to pick up the knockout, even though I lost my life orb. Kyurem is slow, but uh, that is fine. As probably his... I would assume Crocodile would be switching. It's actually Gastrodon. 
which is fine because I'm gonna go for a roost. Yeah, roost, and then switch into Empoleon because remember I do carry Toxic on uh, this uh, Empoleon, so I'm fine. He goes for Scald. Uh, doesn't get the burn, which is fortunate as I basically healed healed my Kieran for free. As he goes for Toxic, which is nice because I just switched into the Toxic. As I'm gonna get my own Toxic up, and then I'm gonna go for my Rocks. Empoleon is kind of expendable. I mean, he can go into Crobat. I don't think he predicts me to have Toxic. Empoleon is not really a Pokemon that carries Toxic. As UU is filled with Dragon, so usually run Ice Beam. As we are able to land a Toxic, which is nice. As he goes for the Skull, probably trying to get the Burn. He does get the Burn, but that's fine. Skull, Toxic, probably Recover, and probably last move Ice Beam. I don't think he has Earth Power. I'm going to go for my Rocks. As he switches out to Crocodile now, that is fine. Uh, unfortunately, we do not know uh, what kind of Crocodile variant he is. So, he could be Scarf. He could also be Rocks, because I could really see this being a Rock Setter. I don't think Gastrodon's Rocker, and Needle Queen's probably offensive. Now, two plays he could make is just go straight for the Earthquake. He could get up his own Rocks, or he can um, double into Gastrodon. Trying to bait the water type attack. I'm gonna go into Aerodactyl because it beats two of his plays. As he goes for Crunch, that is offensive Crocodile. There's no way he should have done that much. As I don't have a much of a switch in, I think Arcanine is my best switch in, so I'm gonna go into my Arcanine. As he goes for Crunch again, which is fine. Yeah, he's definitely offensive Crocodile. I don't think that's banded. I think I could click Flare Blitz, but. Gastrodon might want to come in, but if Gastrodon does come in, I don't think that's really a problem. And uh, Choice Band of Flare Blitz will be able to knock out anything he wants to switch into. Maybe not Needle Queen, but it would just weaken it uh, so that my Aerodactyl can beat it. As we do knock out Crocodile, that Crocodile was a threat. Probably Choice Scarf, and that was a huge threat to my team, actually, as Crobat's probably going to come out. Uh, no, Needle Queen. He's not outspeeding me. Unless he's Scarf. And if he's Scarf, he has to lock himself into a move. I don't, I don't understand this play. Uh, unless he wants to get late game rocks for me dying to recoil. But I don't think that's really worth it at this point. As we are able to get Flare Blitz and knock out the Needle Queen. So it was able to knock out the Needle Queen. Choice Band Arcanine is so strong. As he's going to forfeit because he has no way to beat me with his Gastronaut Toxic. And basically my Roost Kyurem could actually just stall for the game. As, yeah, we're actually pretty low on the ladder. As we're going to find, I think, one more game. I think this should be the last game of this session. As my opponent bring Houndoom, Heracross, Vaporeon, Gligar, uh, Swampert, and Gudra. So, his Hazard and Defog user would be Gligar. It does carry Stealth Rock and Defog. Gligar is actually an annoying mod to deal with. Uh, Houndoom or Heracross. I'm actually curious about which one's his Mega Pokemon. Uh, they're both viable in other ways. Houndoom usually carry a Life Orb if it's not Mega, and Heracross usually carries like a Choice Scarf or something. Choice Scarf Moxie would actually be scary um, for my team. Uh, looks like uh, Galvantula can actually just beat his team. Yeah, I actually like Galvantula. It has Giga Drain, it has the HP Ice. He leads off with Gudra though, which is like the one thing I did not want him to lead. But, that should be fine. As, I don't know what I want to bring out. Because I don't know what he would go for. I don't want to switch into Kyurem directly because number one, Kyurem doesn't do much. And he could go for a Draco Meteor. I do not want to get webs up yet because I do not want him to go for Stealth Rocks and basically I cannot get my webs up in the game. I honestly think uh, Aerodactyl might be a safe switch in or my Arcanine. I think Arcanine is actually a decent switch in because uh, Arcanine can do the most damage. He goes for a Dragon Pulse, gets a crit which is unfortunate but if we can get a lot of damage onto Gudra I will accept it. He's going to switch out go to Gligar which is his actually best play. As oh, he can get hazards up now. I'm gonna go into Kyurem because he has no real big switch into Kyurem other than a Vaporeon. As he goes for Earthquake, that actually doesn't do much. That doesn't do much. As I'm gonna go for the Ice Beam, I mean, I could predict his Vaporeon, but 
even if his Vaporeon comes out, I can go into my, uh, I can go into Empoleon, get a Toxic off, or I can go into my, um, Galvantula. I'd probably go Empoleon, though, because he would probably click Scald and try to burn me. I think Galvantula is also very important in this game. It's the one Pokemon that I really have that can beat a Swampert efficiently. As he actually goes Heracross, which is an interesting switch. I wonder if he's, uh... Well, problem is, I do not want him to go for a, if he's not Scarf, I don't want him to go for like a Sub or a Sword Stance with Mega Heracross. I think it would be Scarf if he brings it out. But if he's Scarf, he has to lock himself into a Fighting type move to knock me out. And if he does, Karam isn't that important. And I could just get a free switch into Hoopa and get a free substitute up, basically. And Sub would really help me in this game. So I think I'm just going to click Ice Beam. As we are able to outspeed him, so he was not Scarf. And it looks like Mega Houndoom will be this game. Or maybe he chose not to Mega Ball because... One, close combat would knock me out. And two, you get a speed decrease if you are, um... If you Mega Ball for Paragross, you lose 10 base speed. So that that was a interesting play. As he does bring out Houndoom, we do speed tight. I am going to go for Earth Power. As he is Mega Houndoom, he goes for Nasty Plop, but I do have Earth Power and am, am able to knock him out. So that is nice. As let's see what he's going to bring out next, as it is Swampert now. Swampert's uh, usually bulky. Yeah, Swampert's usually bulky uh, defensive, so... I didn't want to click Roost here. I really don't see a reason to go for um, for an attack. Because one, my Gavantula can beat his team. So yeah, I'm going to go for Roost here. As he's going to go for Roar, probably predicting a switch. Going to go into my Empoleon. That's fine. As I could probably go for my Rocks here. Yeah, I'm going to go for my Rocks. I don't care if he goes for the Earthquake. That's fine. As he goes for his own rocks, which is completely fine. And I'm going to go for my Toxic here. I could go for Scald, hope for a burn, but if Vaporeon comes out, I really want to get a burn on that Pokemon. Be or uh, if Gudra comes out, because Toxic would help me against any mod. As he goes for Roar again, which is fine, as I miss my Toxic, which is uh, not the worst situation. I'm going to go into Galvantula and click Giga Drain, because uh, the only switching he would really have is Gudra. As he actually does go Gudra, uh, predicting me, and uh, he gains Sap Sipper, which is nice. Luckily, he's not Leftovers, so it's actually really viable for me to win this game. I'm going to go into Empoleon and get a Toxic, hopefully get a Toxic off. As he goes for a Dragon Pulse, that does absolutely nothing. As I'm going to fire off a Toxic, because it hits everything. It hits everything. I don't care what wants to switch in. And nothing really wants to take a Toxic. As he has Earthquake, gets a crit. He's plus one. That still didn't knock me out. That's actually pretty funny. As, uh... I'm gonna go for my Scald here. Yeah, just let's fire off a Scald. He's gonna go for Dragon Pulse in case I switched into Aerodactyl. Uh, Aerodactyl is actually the most... Ex uh, pretty much the mon I really don't need to win this game. And Gudra is the Pokemon I need to damage in order to win this game. Because once Gudra goes down, my Galvantula basically wins the game. So I'm going to click my Aerial Ace as he stays in, which is nice. And we do get a crit, which is unfortunate because I do not think Aerial Ace would be able to knock him out. But that's actually really helpful for me. As here, I'm just going to get any initial damage off to Swampert in case he was uh, specially defensive. But it looks like he was physically defensive and he is Scald. I'm just going to click Aerial Ace again. I have no reason to switch out. Aerial Ace does a nice amount of damage. He goes for Roar. Because uh, he knows I can't get rid of rocks, so that is a nice play. I'm going to go for my, uh, I could go for a Shadow Ball here. Yeah, I'm pretty free to click Shadow Ball. As we are able to do a nice damage to that Swampert. He goes for Earthquake, which is fine. As I can go for my Shadow Ball again. Or I could go for Psy Shock, predicting Vaporeon. I'd rather go Shadow Ball. And Shadow Ball is able to knock out his uh, Swampert as... I would assume Gligar would come out here, as it's actually Vaporeon, which is fine. I Scald should not be able to break my sub, so I'm going to go for my sub here, as we'll see. As he does go for Scald, and that actually does break my sub. That's actually unfortunate. I'm going to go for my Psyshock here, though. As Psyshock is able to do a nice amount, as he does go for Scald. Uh, luckily, does not burn me. Looks like Scald's a roll on my sub. 
I'm gonna go for Sir Ice Shock again, and we just put him in enough damage to where I can click uh, Thunder plus HP Ice for the win. Yeah. I mean, I could have went into uh, Kiram Draco Meteor, but I do not want to risk him. Uh, just, I do not want to risk it in general. I do get the Thunder off and able to knock out his Vaporeon, uh, which is fine, because even if he switched out to Gly Gligar, I would be able to click HP Ice next turn, and it was able to knock him out, so either way, I would have won the game, as that is going to be good game. As I think we're going to find one more. I think we have time for one more. I just checked. Yeah, we have time for one more. As we're going to find one more game. I am really enjoying this tier. As we're going to find uh, this interesting team of Absol, Machamp, Porygon 2, Tentacruel, Vaporeon, and Chandelure. So, he has hazards in his Tentacruel and a way to get rid of them. Toxic Spikes, Spikes, Rapid Spin. Um, should be interesting. Chandelure should be Scarf. The water types are annoying to deal with, and uh, Tentacruel is extremely annoying to deal with for this team. Actually, no, I have Hoopa. Hoopa can be this team uh, if I play my cards right, because Porygon 2 shouldn't be able to touch it. Uh, he should be leading Absol. Yeah, I think he would lead Absol. There's no reason to not lead Absol, but I'm going to lead my uh, Galvantula against his Machamp now. If he Scarf, he'll outspeed me, but I'm not sure about that. I'm going to go for my Sticky Web because if I'm able to get Sticky Web up, that is nice against this entire team. Yeah, it's really nice against this entire team as... Or do I predict him to go for a Fine Time move? He could just go for a knockoff right here, which I could definitely see. The... Well, I could switch into Hoopa here. But I kind of want my Sticky Web up. Yeah, I kind of... I'd rather have my Sticky Web up. Because one, we get to find out if he's Scarf. Scarf's run Jolly, I believe. So, uh, if he is Scarf, he should be able to outspeed me by like a few points. And if he isn't Scarf, uh, basically... He might be Bandit. Or AV. I can definitely see those. But... Yeah, I can't, I just want uh, my Sticky Web up so my Pokemon can outspeed his Absol. I can outspeed him with my Kyurem. I can outspeed him with my Hoopa, and Hoopa would be really nice uh, for me to outspeed him. I can outspeed Chandelure with my Kyurem if he's Scarf. And I can also outspeed him with my Hoop. I think I, I'll be able to outspeed him with Hoopa. It might be a speed tie. Um, yeah, that's basically it. Absol... As I said, I can outspeed him with my Arcanine and get a close combat off. So it should be interesting. Uh, he's taking a lot of time to pick his move. As I'm wondering if he's going to be inactive. He might just be inactive. Oh boy, but... I really want to play this game. What I think can win this game is just my Hoopa. If I get my Sticky Web up. Because uh, Sub Hoopa can set up on his Tentacruel. It can set up on his Vaporeon, possibly. It can also set up on his Machamp if he is choice, because if he choice locks himself into like a fine type move, let's say Dynamic Punch, I can definitely switch into Hoopa after. Um, and it can definitely uh, stall Porygon 2 out. Uh, Absol, under st after Sticky Web, it'll be fo he'll be forced to go for a Sucker Punch. I could sub up then, as I think he's actually going to lose to Timer. And he's the one who's actually... Who actually put the timer. So that is ironic. But we are going to take this game I guess. And we are going to find another one. We are going to find one more. Uh, don't know why you would. Uh, use, put the timer on. And then uh, just not play the game. But whatever. As we are going to find this team. Aerodactyl. Swampert. Darmanitan. Blissey. Oh my god. A Blissey. Luckily you cannot learn minimize. Thank you lord for banning. Minimize the one thing they did right in singles. <laughs> now they've done a great amount of stuff, but Minimize Band was the best thing for singles. Like, if you ever play singles battle spot, you're going to run into so many Minimize teams. That's why I really like Smog in singles where Minimize is banned. Um, Crowdon and uh, Gardevoir. So, the Mega Pokemon will probably be Aerodactyl. Swamp is usually the Stealth Rock user. Uh, Darmanitan, probably Choice Scarf. 
Blissey, Yushi, the Leftovers. It could carry counter, which I have to worry about. Uh, I think Hoopa's immune to counter, though. Proton, probably Choice Band, the Life Orb, Dragon Dance. Probably Life Orb, Dragon Dance. And Gardevoir, I actually don't know what Gardevoir runs normal. But I could leave my Arcanine here, but I really don't want him. Actually, he has no way to get rid of Hazards. He has no way to get rid of, ha get rid of Hazards. I think I'm going to lead Galvantula as he's going to lead Swampert. I do carry Giga Drain. And I think I'm going to go for Giga Drain right here. When it scares out his Swampert. Uh, if he does live for some reason. Which I can definitely see him living. Uh, we actually get a critical hit so we will never know. Which is really unfortunate. Um, if he was physically defensive I think we would have knocked him out. But if he was specially defensive. Uh, which I don't think they run. I think they run physically defensive. So we'll never know. The man tent is going to come out. I'm going to go for my sticky web. Because he might go for U-turn just breaking the sash. I can definitely see that, but I just want to get my sticky web up. As he does go for the U-turn, which is completely fine by me. I would assume Blissey would come out. I would assume Blissey would come out. As he does go Crawdon, which is fine. I don't know what he wants to do with Crawdon, but I don't want him to set up by any means necessary. So I'm going to go for the Thunder. He's going to go for the Aqua Jet. He is Life Orb, so that is nice to confirm. As here... I can go for a Draco. I crawled on special defense should be really bad. So I'm gonna go cure him, and I think I'm gonna click Draco Meteor. Yeah. Now Crawl is probably gonna switch out actually, probably into Blissey or Gardevoir. If I can catch the Gardevoir switch in, uh, that'd be nice. But he actually stays in with Crawl on. That's actually interesting. As he goes for knockoff, knock you on my life orb. As does he outspeed me? He probably does outspeed my uh, Empoleon. But that is nice because Crawdon does not get recovery unless... The only thing that could recover his Crawdon backup is Blissey with Healing Wish or Gardevoir with Healing Wish. I'm going to go for Roost as he goes for Aqua Jet. That is able to pick up the knockout. Adaptability just being too strong here. I'm going to go for Arcanine as I can go for Extreme Speed. Um, luckily, uh, Kyurem was expendable because Kyurem really didn't do much to his team. Uh, with uh, Blissey. So I'm going to Extreme Speed here. Because Extreme Speed does hit everything. Except Aerodactyl that wants to come in. But Aerodactyl is fine. Because Aerodactyl shouldn't carry anything. That can damage my Empoleon for much. I mean Earthquake is a thing. But it should be a 3 hit KO on my Empoleon. As he goes for Stone Edge. As that doesn't do anything. As I'm pretty free to click Scald. If he wants to switch out. His only switch up would probably be Blissey. As he does go for the Earthquake, uh, we do go for the Scald. And that is able to pick up the Knockout, which is nice. Because now I do not have to worry about Aerodactyl for my Hoopa possibility just sweeping the game. I should probably go for my Rocks. Because uh, getting Rocks would be nice. He is going to go Darmat 10 and is going to... I don't know what he would do here. Probably Flare Blitz. I think he's forced to Flare Blitz or Earthquake. I'm going to go into my Aerodactyl here because Empoleon's Rocks could be really important in game. I doubt he's going for U-Turn. As he goes for Hammer Arm, which is actually fine. As here, <laughs> I'm actually in a weird position because I cannot Roost here. Because if I do Roost here, that actually uh, makes his Hammer Arm super effective and knock out my Aerodactyl. So I'm going to go for my Stone Edge here. As he does stay in, unfortunately, I do miss my Stone Edge, which is really unfortunate. But he misses his Hammer Arm, so... Justice. Justice. Actually, I can go into Hoopa here. Yeah, I can go into Hoopa here. There's no reason not to go into Hoopa. I just realized if he has Hammer Arm, I should switch into Hoopa. It is nice to get the speed, though, on Aerodactyl. Actually, there really isn't a reason. But he ha he's actually going to go out to Blissey, which is fine. Because one, I stall break him with sub. Uh, unless he has a... I don't know what could actually break my Hoopa's sub. We are going to go for my sub here as he goes for the Thunder Wave, which is nice. And here I'm pretty free to click Psy Shock. Yeah, Psy Shock's pretty free. As I would love to sub Hoopa in this format. Psy Shock does a really good amount. As I think I'm going to click Shadow Ball because he probably expects another Psy Shock and is probably going to pass it onto his Crawdon. So I'm going to go for my Shadow Ball as he does switch out into Guard War, actually. That's an interesting switch. I'm not sure if that's a switch. 
to a shadow ball. Oh wow, that actually hangs on. Uh, does a lot. That shadow ball did a lot. He heals all the way. However, what can Gardevoir really do to my Hoopa? That's the question. A shadow ball able to do a good amount of damage. He is guaranteed slower. He goes for his own shadow ball, which is fine. He's life orb, so he knocks himself out, which is awesome. As now he's pretty much forced to switch into either. Uh, He's pretty much forced to switch into Chronot, which I'll just switch out to my Empoleon, or his Darmanitan, because he cannot switch out to anything else. Darmanitan is going to come out, and here... I think Aerodactyl is pretty free again. Yeah, I'm going to go Aerodactyl, because he's probably going for the Flare Blitz. That is able to knock out my Aerodactyl, but that is fine. Uh, he took chip damage, which is nice. I'm going to go into my Arcanine, and I can literally spam close combat. Yeah. Plus combat knocks out everything on my opponent's team. As he's going to switch out to Blissey, which is not going to take this close combat as Blissey is going to drop. As Kron, I'm probably coming back in here, I would assume. Darmatan. Actually, Darmatan is faster than my Arcanine, so that's annoying. Kron is going to come out, but I'm just going to switch into my Empoleon. If he wants to make a double, which is pretty much uh, his only big chance of winning. Actually, he could still win. No, because I click ex Extreme Speed and uh, Darmanitan has to lock himself into move. As he does go for the Aqua Jet and is able to knock himself out. So, he is forced to lock himself into a move. Flare Blitz is a possibility. Earthquake is definitely a possibility. But Earthquake shouldn't be able to knock out my uh, Hoopa. As here, I'm just going to go for the Scald. And uh, basically lose my Empoleon. But I don't really care if Empoleon goes down. Because one I'll get a free switch into Arcanine Intimidate. He goes for Zen Headbutt. Is he hoping for flinches? But we are able to knock out his Darmatan and we are gonna take this game. So I think we went undefeated in this, but again low ladder. But I am really am enjoying playing the tiers. I actually really love playing showdown singles. It's actually really fun. And I hope I encourage you guys to check it out if you guys haven't already, because it's really fun. I uh, haven't played with this team in a while. I'm actually remembering some of the battles I had with this team in the past. But I hope you guys enjoyed this. If you guys want to see more of this series, please leave a like down below. It shows your support. And it also shows me how much you guys want this series on this channel. Be sure to check out my VGC episodes if you are a singles player. And uh, don't know me for my VGC content. Because VGC is the competitive metagame that I play. so And that I'm good at. So definitely go check that out. And I'll see you guys next time.